Welcome to the RSET online course on Special Electrical Machines, W402. This course is offered to the 8th semester students of APJ Abdul Kalam, Kerala Technological University. Myself, Carolyn and Sam, working as assistant professor in AAA department of Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. And I will be taking lecture on switched reluctance motor. So moving on to the first topic, torque developed by a switch reluctance motor. For an SRM motor, the torque is produced by the variation of reluctance or permeance of air gap and it is given by the expression T equal to half I square dl by d theta where I is the current flowing through the winding, L is the inductance which is a function of rotor position theta. Let's derive the equation for the torque produced. For a winding with a resistance R, if a voltage V is applied across it, the voltage equation can be written as V equal to IR plus D psi by DT, where psi is the flux linkage and it is the product of inductance and the current flowing through it. So the voltage equation can be written as V equal to IR plus D by DT of Li. Now we have to differentiate the flux linkage apply by applying the product rule. So we will get the voltage equation as V equal to IR plus L into DI by DT. L into di by dt plus i into dl by dt. Now dl by dt can be written as dl by d theta into d theta by dt. Now as we know d theta by dt is nothing but omega which is the angular velocity in radians per second. So we can again uh, write the equation voltage equation as v equal to ir plus l into di by dt plus i into dl by d theta into omega which is equation number one now multiply equation number one with current on both sides you'll get the power input equation as vi is equal to i square r plus li di by dt plus I square DL by D theta into omega which is equation number 2. Now in general the stored energy in an inductor or coil is given by the expression half into Li square where L is the inductance and I is the current flowing through the winding of the coil. Now take the der derivative of half Li square. Again you have to apply the product rule. Taking half the constant term outside d by dt of Li square is equal to half into L into derivative of I square is 2i di by dt plus I square into dl by dt. Now dl by dt can be split up as dl by d theta into d theta by dt where d theta by dt is nothing but the angular velocity omega. So the derivative of half li square can be written as d by dt of half li square is equal to li di by dt plus half i square into dl by d theta into omega. Now rearrange and find the expression for li di by dt. You will get li di by dt is equal to d by dt of half li square minus 
half i square dl by d theta into omega that is equation number 3. Now substitute equation number 3 in equation number 2 you will get the power input vi is equal to i square r. So instead of li di by dt in equation number 2 you have to write d by dt of half li square minus half i square dl by d theta into omega and the other term is already there half i uh, sorry i square dl by d theta into omega. So the equation becomes vi is equal to i square r plus d by dt of half li square minus half i square dl by d theta into omega plus i square dl by d theta into omega. Now these two terms can be simplified and it becomes plus half i square dl by d theta into omega. So the final expression for vi is power input v i is equal to i square r plus d by dt of half l i square plus half i square dl by d theta into omega. Name it as equation number 4. Now the power input has three terms. First term is i square r which is the ohmic power loss. The second term is d by dt of half l i square which is the power stored in magnetic field. And third term is half i square dl by d theta into omega which is the mechanical power output. So mechanical out power output we got it as half i square dl by d theta name it as equation number 5. We have another expression for mechanical power output as omega into t that is product of torque and angular velocity. Name it as equation number 6. Now comparing or equating equation number 5 and 6 and eliminating omega from both sides you will get the expression for torque as t equal to half i square dl by d theta. So which is the required expression or we have reached the derivation or we have completed the derivation of torque produced by switch reluctance motor. Moving on to the next important topic, different types of power converters used for switch reluctance motor. For the power converters of switch reluctance motor, it should satisfy the following requirements. First requirement is we have to or we need to energize each phase independently preferably it should be done and the excited pole should be demagnetized before the entry of SRM into the generating zone which means that uh, the generating zone is nothing but in an inductance profile it is the reducing inductance region. So before the reducing inductance region that particular winding has to be de-energized. Freewheeling should be achieved during the chopping period and the energy demagnetization energy of a particular winding should be fed back to this supply back for a regeneration purpose. Finally, the circuit should be made cost effective. So many types of power converter circuits are available for a switch reluctance motor. We have listed here five numbers. So moving on to the first type of circuit, circuit with two switching devices per phase. In the circuit given, the SRM motor has three phases A, B and C. Each phase has two switches and two diodes. Taking the case of phase A, phase A has two switches T1 and T2 and two diodes D1 and D2. For phase B you have T3 and T4 and D3, D4. 
for phase C you have T5 and T6 and D5 and D6. Now for expla explaining the working principle you need to know about three modes of operation of this circuit. The first mode is named as positive phase voltage, second mode is named as zero phase voltage and third mode is negative phase voltage. So the working of this converter circuit will be explained in these three modes of operation. Take the first mode positive phase voltage. In this mode we are turning on both the switches C1 and T2 and current starts to flow from the supply to the winding. Energy is transferred from the supply to the winding through the switches. T1 and T2. The current direction is shown as dotted lines in the figure. Current increases in the phase winding. In mode 2, which is named as zero phase voltage, in this mode, we have to turn off either of the switches. Say for examining, keep, example, keeping T1 on, we have to turn off T2 or keeping T2 on, we have to turn off T1. So, as a result, a zero voltage will be imposed on the winding due to the freewheeling action. Take the first case, when T1 is turned on, the current starts to flow in the direction shown in the figure through diode D2. Freewheeling action takes place and the energy stored in the inductor will be freewheeled. Since diode D2 and T1 are conducting, it the voltage across the winding, voltage drop across the or the voltage potential difference between the winding terminals will be zero. So that's why it is known as zero phase voltage mode. Take the second case when T1 is off and T2 is on, the energy stored in the phase winding is free wheeled through diode D1. Again, since T1 and D2 are conducting, the potential difference between uh, the winding terminals is zero and zero voltage is Im imposed on the winding. In this mode, <clears throat> no energy is being supplied or being returned back to this DC supply. Next mode is negative phase voltage mode. In this mode, both the switches T1 and T2 should be off and when T1 and T2 switches are off the energy which is stored in the winding during the mode 1 operation will be fed back to the supply through diodes D1 and D2 and a negative phase voltage is imposed on the winding you can see that the lower terminal of the winding is having the positive polarity and the upper terminal is having a negative polarity which means that a negative phase voltage is imposed on the phase winding. That's why it is known as uh, negative phase voltage mode. Now let's discuss the working of the circuit taking one leg of the circuit. Take the phase A leg. So for this, for explaining the working, we will see the graph of inductance profile, then actual, the reference current IA star, the actual current IA flowing through the winding, the gating pulses given to switches T1 and T2 and the voltage imposed or applied or coming across the winding A. Now we energize a particular winding at the starting point of the increasing inductance region. So at this point we are giving gating pulse to switches T1 and T2. So when both the switches are in on state 
it will be node 1 that is positive phase voltage will be applied across the winding and the current in the winding starts to increase gradually due to the inductance effect it cannot increase or the current cannot increase suddenly now the current or uh, the converter works with the help of a controller which works within a current controller there is this band which has an upper limit and lower limit of current so the in inductor or the winding current gradually increases and when it reaches the upper limit the controller will give command to withdraw the gating signal from switch t2 so t2 will be turned off when the winding current reaches the upper limit of the band hysteresis band which is defined by the current controller so now the controller or the converter now the converter will work in mode 2 which means that t1 remains in on state and t2 is off in this case freewheeling action takes place and voltage across the winding will be zero and as a result current in the winding reduces and when it reaches the lower limit of the hysteresis band again gating signal is applied to t2 and again the converter will switch to mode one operation where both T1 and T2 are in on state and positive voltage is applied across the winding. As a result, current in the winding goes on increasing. Now, this process continues until the uh, ending point of the increasing inductance region reaches. Now, at the ending point, we have to de-energize the winding. So, for that, we withdraw the gating signal from both T1 and T2. So, at this point, at the ending point of the increasing inductance region, both the switches T1 and T2 will be off and the converter will work in mode 3 where a negative voltage will be imposed across the winding and the negative voltage will be imposed until the current in the winding becomes so this is how the circuit works advantages of this type of circuit we have com complete and independent control of each phase for each phase, we have separate switches and separate diodes, so we have complete and independent control. And second uh, advantage is that the freewheeling operation during the mode 2 will reduce the switching stress and switching loss across the turned off switches. And the mode 3 operation, which is the energy regeneration operation, will result in better utilization of energy improving the efficiency of the drive but we have a disadvantage here we require higher number of switches uh, because for each phase we require uh, two controllable switches and two diodes so for in general for n phase you require 2n number of switches and diodes so that makes the system quite expensive So in this session, we have seen the torque equation of the switch electrons motor, its derivation, and we start. We are we have started the discussion on different types of converter circuits used for an SRM drive. Now, in the next lecture, we will continue our discussion on different types of converter circuits for SRM drive. References for preparing this lecture is a textbook on special electrical machines by E.G. Janadhanan, Power Electronics Handbook by Mohammed H. Rachid, and NPTEL course on Advanced Electric Drives by Dr. S.P. Das.
थैंक यू